Howdy, y'all, and welcome to another episode of the Stay Creative Podcast, a show dedicated to highlighting, promoting, and celebrating the unique art and soul of the many talented independent artists that I meet. Through making this show, I have strengthened an existing belief that you cannot have a conversation with a person about their passion without taking some of it for yourself. So this show is also dedicated to sharing insights, tips, and encouragement that are going to be beneficial to people in any stage of finding, refining, or perfecting their creative voice. This week we are talking with Caleb and Allison. Allison is the singer-songwriter and her husband Caleb plays trombone and arranges songs for their band, Big Beat. They are talented, passionate, and hardworking folks with the music to show for it. They will be sharing some of their music with us, along with some of what they have learned in their time making music. So stick around. Thank you both so much for agreeing to come on the the show, agreeing to talk with everyone here at IMF and and beyond. Um, Everyone has a good deal of enjoyment of the music you've shared and they are just, just like me, pretty excited to get to know you better as people, as artists, as uh, creative individuals, you know, the, 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 the whole shebang, the show's um, gonna, gonna try to get some of all of that. Um, but the first thing I like to ask people is who are you? So, so introduce yourself. I'm a singer songwriter. Um, I'm the lead vocalist of Big Beat. So the 19 piece big band, the music that we've been sharing with you guys and the lead vocalist for that group. And I also um, am a songwriter. Um, A few of my songs ended up on our our last debut album. I'm really, really proud of that. Um, And I just, I love making music. It's it's a true passion of mine. Um, I love listening to music. I love playing music. So um, that's what I'm really, really passionate about. Um, And yeah, that's it. Yeah, awesome. Well, glad to have you. Uh, what about you, Caleb? So, uh, yeah, my name is Caleb, and um, I'm a trombonist, first of all. So I I went to college for music. That's where I met Allison. And uh, I've always enjoyed just learning about music, learning about trombone. And um, I love to make music. A certain little niche would be big band music, which I've always loved because I think probably some of the first groups I ever played in, in school we're big bands and i just thought wow this is fun and uh just never stopped just keep going with it and um yeah i guess that's a little about a little bit about me and i live in new jersey and uh happily married to uh, Allison. so yeah mm-hmm. yeah so so <laughs> i i absolutely want to go over the timeline of when you started making music so when when you say <laughs> when you say school is that middle school you know you, you picked up the trombone or or when did you start playing music Caleb i started playing the trombone when i was in the 4th grade so i guess Excellent. 10 years old yeah yeah oh yeah um i actually I was like in band when I was in like fourth or fifth grade. So I, I had already kind of like taken an interest to like music. Um, so I was in band for a little bit. I played clarinet. Um, and then when I got to junior high school, I just really saw that, like, I, I just love singing so much more. Um, so I was in choirs and taking voice lessons at that time. And just really just trying to just like learn as much as I could about singing, doing it as much as I can. So that's where it all really started for me. I feel like I hear a little bit of that uh, instrumentation background in your vocal style. Like the introduction to the verse often will have tasteful uh, vocal uh, melodies that that come and go and and then the words start. And and you feel like you've already kind of heard like a a sweet solo before it. So I I think that uh, that shines through for sure. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Having established when you guys got into music in general, I, another question I wanted to ask has been answered. I, you were playing music before you met, at the very least. Um, mm-hmm. So probably, and additionally, before you got married. Uh, but the current group that you are in, uh, uh, Big Beat, was this band established before or after the two of you got together? So it's it's interesting because um, the band was kind of established like right after. Um, so we had we had just started dating 
and the band was beginning to form. Yeah. Um, but and the interesting story is they had another vocalist yes. that they they wanted to be in the group, um, and it just wasn't working out with her. Like it, you know the timing, <sighs> I, of things going just... on in her life, it just like wasn't the right time. And we we had been dating for like six months, so I was kind of like, I don't really know if I want to start a huge project with my girlfriend because if anybody here, you know, if anybody here has ever dated a musician, it can be really hard to have a project together. But you know, the other vocalists started dropping out, and I'm like, Allison's a pretty good singer. I think this will work. We were all kind of nervous, and she came to a practice. Just destroyed the practice. Everyone's like, "Man, she's great." And that was it, and it's been that way ever since. It's been it's five years. It's basically five, six years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is super risky territory because, like, you know, it could go really bad, <laughs> really so quickly. Painful. Yeah, you know? very painful. And I imagine now with, um, because not to give away any of your your personal life, but you 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 are parents. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. Does, does that make, I, I mean, right now, I guess quarantine makes booking gigs difficult, but does that make practice? Does that make gigging difficult? Because you, you've, you've constantly got to have someone to look after the little one. Yeah, I mean, I think in a way it really makes you kind of like, you know, as far as gigging goes, it's like this has to be a really good opportunity. You know, like this has to be something that is going to progress the band um, you know, either through networking, it's got to be something really good if we're going to leave home, you know, get a babysitter. Um, and then, you know, for all you parents out there, I know you I know you guys know what it's like to pack up the car, you know, if, you know when you're dropping your child off. It's like there's so many things <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> that like you have to pack in the car for the gig is a lot. Yeah. But then in addition to that, you need the baby stuff, the bottles, yeah, yeah. the things, the warmers, the medicine. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it was really intense at first, but now we're actually quite a bit better at it. So as time goes on, it gets better. And then, you know. I wanted to uh, to move from kind of y'all's uh, personal musical origin story. And I wanted to talk some about your earliest influences. Um, I, I think you've already touched on starting pretty much with brass and woodwind and, and bigger band ensemble type music. But but what's some of the other stuff that you were into or maybe made early on in your uh, musical journey? Oh, uh, for me, it was like funk music. So I started a band in high school with the greatest band name of any band I've ever assembled. It was called Tasty Bacon Jazz Band. <laughs> Yes. So the band's name was was Tasty Bacon. And uh, we started playing funk music. Jacko Pistorius, uh, Maceo Parker, you know, stuff like The Chicken, stuff like Tower of Power. And I was like, man, trombone is in this funk music. <laughs> I was like, this is fun, man. I really like that. And it's kind of always stuck by me. Allison? Yeah, so for me, um, I... I was like a huge Christina Aguilera fan, really, really into pop music and R&B. Um, so just really listening to people like her and Whitney Houston, um, you know, just to like get better at singing. Um, and then as far as writing, uh, you know, one big influence for me has always been Stevie Wonder. Um, you know, to me, he is he is just you know, the epitome of just like great songwriting, great chords, and his dis- discography is just like so immense and, and all of it is so good. Um, I still feel like I have so much to learn from him. Um, so I'm just always listening. Um, and as you know, when it comes to a songwriter, like Stevie Wonder is, is it for me. I think one of our goals is we, we haven't, we've never seen him live before. I would love to see him live and just to to witness, you know, that talent, uh, you know, in person would be amazing. So Stevie is a big, big influence for me. What would you say elevates his songwriting to something that is worth just studying, learning? Uh, you know what? It's it's the melodies. It's the harmonic progressions. Um, it's the storytelling. 
Um, you know, one of my favorite songs by him is called uh, Blame It on the Sun. And um, he just does these little things in the song. Like he has this, this thing at the end of the song where um, he'll bring like backing vocals in to like illuminate like more of the story. Um, all of it is just so beautiful. But what I've always enjoyed is that they were always like very subtle choices, like the risks that he would take in his songwriting. Like it was never like, you know, this pop musician that is trying to be, trying to create complicated music and, you know, use all these difficult jazz chords. It, it's never that. But when you look underneath, you just see, um, you know, how far his reach is, you know, when it comes to chords, when it comes to melody, when it comes to lyrics. Um, so that for me is what elevates him is the music is just so intricate. Um, but it's like you can listen to um, Sir Duke. You love it, right? You listen, it's like a great song. But when you really examine it and get in there, there's, there's, there's so much there to unpack and examine. Um, and that's what, I, that's what I hope to achieve, you know, in my songwriting. You know, stuff that is just like, you know, people can listen to it and sing to it and dance to it, but it's got some meat on its bones, you know? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned Sir Duke because that was a song that I was trying to learn in high school. Just because I just, man, the horns are so great. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, I love the horns in this. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was so cool. Yeah. Children love love uh, you know, St Stevie Wonder. Like when yes. you hear his song, without knowing anything about the complexity or the decisions being made, he can turn anything into a hook. Yes. You know? yeah. And it only gets more impressive as you learn. Yeah. You know, yes. and, and examine it again. I, I love that kind of songwriting. Where it's, I always say the phrase, it holds up to the microscope. Yeah, So when yeah. you use the microscope and you zoom in on every single element, there's a lot there. There's mm -hmm. a lot there. It's great yeah. music. Nothing's phoned in. <laughs> yeah. If you right now could give yourself a 10-year-old picking up the trombone or, you know, a student learning clarinet for the first time or, or getting into singing for the first time, if you could send a piece of advice back to that person from who you are right now today, what do you think that would be? Uh, we will start with Caleb this time. Oh, okay. Um, I think I would have spent a little bit more time learning from others who are promoting their music online. Because I think I spent a lot of time learning the trade, the music, uh, you know, making music. For you producers out there, it's kind of like making a beat. But what I'll do is I'll arrange all the elements. And I spent a lot of time working on that craft, but not as much time working on how to promote it. And you can have the best song in the world, but if you don't put the time into sharing it with the world, it's not going to go that far. So... Probably would have spent more time making YouTube videos and getting out there more time in online communities. What about you, Allison? I think for me, um, one thing that I always wished is that, um, you know, that I had tried a little bit harder to, to be a part of my local music community. Um, so just like going to open mics you know, trying to play with, with different people. Um, I think being a part of a, a music community is really, really important. Um, you know, you get so much support. Uh, you know, you get to know people, you get to learn things from people um, that it's very hard to do that on your own. When I started out, I was, I was very shy and I, and I still am kind of shy. So oftentimes, you know, I just, I wouldn't go to an open mic or I wouldn't go to a jam because I was nervous, um, you know, that, that I didn't know a song or that, that I wasn't good enough. So I would just avoid it altogether. Um, and I think if I had pushed myself a little bit more, it would have been nice to, to be a part of the, you know, the, the Jersey Shore, uh, you know, music scene. So that's what I wish I would have done. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good I think thing to tell 
yourself, even even like where where you are right now, or for, for me, I'm speaking from my own experience, but but there's a lot of reason to not do something. There's a lot of reason to be nervous and, and things, you know? Uh, yeah. what, what, what would you say? I mean, you said you're still shy some somewhat, but uh, what would you say <laughs> changed like um, from, from then to now, is there a, a mindset or maybe an experience or something that, that gave you a little more boldness? Um, definitely, you know, performing more definitely gave me more confidence um so performing in different bands being in different you know scenarios on the bandstand having to kind of like assert myself it definitely gave me more confidence um you know writing my own music and trusting myself as a songwriter and the choices that I made definitely gave me more confidence and when I looked back on it I was like wow I I could have gone to those open mic nights like like I am pretty good you know like you know so you know there that shyness kind of like was a hindrance for me because um it was very hard for me to kind of like you know and sometimes you know as artists and musicians it can be hard to get out of your head you know you're just like I'm not good enough I I don't look like that person I don't I don't play an instrument as well I wouldn't be able to do it on my own and the reality is if I had just gone out there um, and tried to make those connections, um, who knows, you know, what, what my life would look like today, but that's something I would definitely encourage people to do. If there's a music community around you, that's like bustling, you know, there's stuff going on, try and get out and meet those people. Um, because you, you know, we all need support. We all need, you know, people around us that are going to encourage us and help us and, and support us. So, Music communities are really important. Yeah, for sure. But both local and, you know, online, like, but both yes. of your answers kind of touched on community. Um, I would say it, it's, it sounds like, and, and this isn't me putting, uh, answering it for you, but it sounds like you're saying the cure for the, the shyness of trying, the, the shyness against trying was, was in the trying a little bit. Like the, the more experience you had with what you were afraid of, the, the less afraid you became over time a little bit. Yes. Yeah. I really just had to, to get out there and do it. Even though I really didn't, really didn't want to, cause I'm an introverted person. Um, I really, really had to do it. Um, you know, because I wanted people to hear my music and at the end of the day, I, I wanted to connect with other musicians. You know, I wanted to play music and write music with other people. Um, and you can't do that by yourself when you're isolated. You know, it's very hard. Caleb, so at what point in dedicating yourself just hardcore directly to the creation, the, the mastering of your instrument, and creation of the music, um, did you kind of realize that you needed more of this promotional side involved? Um, Recent? Recently, yeah. Probably about within the last year because we did a big – Oh man, we put a lot of effort into a Kickstarter campaign. We raised money and we put a lot of money into finishing this huge album. And I just realized when it was all said and done, we put so we put more weight, like 90% of the energy, 98% of the energy into the album. And I thought the album would be like a silver bullet yeah. that would blow everybody open and be like, "Wow, I can't believe this." Well, we put time into the recording. And I think sometimes I think you guys can hear that, you know, in our music, you know, the detail that we're putting into the recording um, and the mixing and the mastering, because those are all very important things. Um, but then when it came to the actual promotion and getting the word out, um, that is where we failed. Um, you know, we just did not put the equal effort in. And I think we can all agree that that, that part of it is, is very important. Um, so, you know, we, we worked with, um, you know, someone, a, a marketing team from some, someone in, in a PR company, someone in a radio company, um, and we, we enlisted them to help us with this part of it. But I think, you know, what you have to remember is that, you know, these companies are working with so many other different artists. You know, so you, you're not always going to be a top, 
priority for them. Yeah. Um, so we just, we wanted them to do all, we were naive and we wanted them to do all the work for us. But, you know, that's never the case. You know, everybody has to pull to do their part, you know, and do their share of it. And we just, we failed at that part of it. (laughs) So that was tough, but we, we regrouped. And honestly, I'm really actually really excited for the future of our group as we go into the quarantine, because we're going online, we're going all in with our YouTube videos. And we have a bunch of stuff that we're going to be releasing over the next six months. Which I'm really happy. We actually shot some videos before the quarantine happened six months ago now that are, we're going to release. So we have some stuff in the bank, which is great. But I, I had this realization when you know we were following a really great singer who has a big following now. Um, her name is Morgan James. Morgan James, yeah. And when we started talking to her, she was like, and I go, man, she's got a lot of followers, a lot of engagement, you know, album sales shows touring you know oh wow she's great we we had this talk with her we one-on-one and we thought oh she's got five people on the team she has people do everything for her she goes caleb and allison i'm on this stuff for three hours a day i do every comment i do every review i t- i make the posts i have like a helper but it's me pushing the rock up the hill because people want to find you online they don't want to find your assistant online And I don't know. I just think that we kind of thought you could skip all the hard work of finding an online audience. Like if I build it, it but Hey, here we are now. And we've been really grinding it up, getting people online and connecting with people on IMF has been awesome. Yes. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with that. To be honest with you, when the quarantine started, I was going crazy. I found you guys just as a way to do something. And I was like, this group is great. So, you know, these kind of connections, these kind of things, it's all a part of getting your music out there into the bigger world. Yeah. You know? The level of precision that you uh, approach your music with has already come to the forefront in the, in the online uh, engagement that I've seen from your, your band, from your YouTube and stuff. Like, it, it's not cell phone videos of people on a stage. It, it is well put together videos. So, so I think the, the time and effort and, and quality that you guys are putting into even this new to you aspect mm-hmm. of the, the passion of this, I think it's really going to pay off, man. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, thank you. Russell. We hope it does too. You know, we hope that this will be a turning point for the group. Um, and, you know, we just, at the end of the day, we just want to engage with other people who, who feel the same way we do about music. You know, that's really what it, it's all about at the end of the day. Um, just reaching out and making those connections. Yep. Well, I'd, I'd like to uh, move into the first of y'all's uh, tracks that we're going to be checking out today. Mr. Wonderful. Would yeah. you guys maybe one at a time, give me a little backstory of, of the track. Uh, we'll start <laughs> with been... Allison this time. <laughs> this is yeah, but so, yeah, this was, this was a song that appeared on uh, my debut album, first love. Um, and uh, I pretty I wrote the song. I think I I arranged like the horns and pretty much arranged everything. Um, so this was this was very like nerve wracking for me because <laughs> this was like my first time like being in control of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it's it's a really fun song, and and Caleb got to feature on it, yep. which was really exciting. Yeah. So this is this reminds me of our college years because this yeah. was a college year vibe. Yeah. I think this was like 2014, 15. So we were, I was finishing up. Oh boy! So I was finishing up a master's, and Allison was finishing up her undergrad. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started, you know, doing a lot of music together. And this is a great memory of that time together. So it's basically Allison's band trombone and two saxophones and i play the trombone parts and uh it's it's a fun track
Woo. Wow. Yeah. What a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Tell me, what, what's something that just sticks out to you? Oh, boy. <laughs> I just, it's, it's, it's hard to describe because I, we don't really, li- it's like I haven't really listened to that in like a few years. I'm not going to lie. So it is an oldie. It's an oldie but a goodie. And uh, we just had a lot of fun with that track. It was definitely in like a time where it was just like, we're just trying to put something together and we're having fun with the process of that. Um, I think every like songwriter has that period where they're just like, let's put the song together. Let's just try and make it happen. And you're not, um, you know, you're not trying to like make it the most perfect thing. Um, you're just trying to, to, to like make the song happen. The, like the, the fun and magic part of it. For sure. I, I think there's a, a good deal of fun and magic in that track. I really enjoy that. There's almost like a, a, a contrasting nature to the whole thing because the, the, the music feels very laid back, almost islandy at times, but the vocals are very energetic and kind of up front. So it, it mm-hmm. feels like a, a, a fusion that, that would seem uh, uh, contradictory on paper, but in execution, it comes across really well. <laughs> Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Very yes, much. thank that is very you. Nice. Yeah. So, I, I like the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, no, that was probably the first time we really dove into a track together. And I do remember working on the trombone solo, and me being like, "Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it." And Allison was in the booth, and she was like, "Oh, it's good. Like, hey, it's good." And I, that was probably the first time uh, we ever really had to work on something together was this yeah. project. Mm-hmm. So. You know, we we went to a, a college in New Jersey that had this like sound engineering program. So we got to be tight with some of the sound engineers. So we were recording that in a studio and it was run by like a college kid figuring it out. Mm-hmm. But it was really fun. So that was a, fun, a way, a really fun way to work on stuff together. Mm-hmm. That's, that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you guys sharing that track with us. Um, I, I want to move uh, from the past up to up to maybe closer to the now um, and start off by just asking if there have been any modern artists that you've encountered maybe in the last year or so, you know, who who have really just redefined what excellence is to you. So something that you think uh, the folks listening might check out uh, to get a better picture of the direction that you as musicians are are trying to go. Yeah, I have one that immediately comes to mind, and that would be Thundercat. So Thundercat oh. is a is a bassist. Uh, his name is Steve Bruno, I believe, and a uh, Bruner. And Thundercat um, played bass and sang on a lot of Kendrick Lamar albums, mm-hmm. including his most famous album, "To Pimp a Butterfly." He's all over that album. Mm. Now Thundercat, as an artist, is just a really great um artist man i heard this guy and i was like i can hear some of the jazz harmonies i can hear the amazing bass playing the vocals are pretty great and he's just he's a one of a kind i love him i think he's really amazing yeah even when he's being uh insane he is amazing (laughs) yes yeah i agree i agree (laughs) allison what about you uh, definitely an artist for me right now is a group called Hiatus Coyote. Um, they're a group, I think, from Australia. Um, and they are just, you know, you can definitely hear the influence of Stevie Wonder in their songwriting. But what they've done is they've, like, added all these, like, different sounds and different elements to the music. Um, and I find that their songwriting is, is, uh, it's very free flowing. Um, you know, usually when you're thinking of a song, you know, you're thinking of a verse and a chorus and, you know, a bridge, but their songwriting tends to take on this, just like there's an instrumental, there's a verse, and then there's, then there's an interlude. Um, they're really just free with their songwriting and their arranging. Yes. The grooves are definitely undeniable. Um, and they're definitely a modern artist that I look for inspiration from and aspire to kind of have that freedom in my songwriting. That's awesome. This is the, the, the perfect combination of answers because I'm familiar with one and I've never heard 
the other. So I'm excited to check out Hiatus Coyote. Yes, yes, yes yeah. check them out. They are amazing. And then the, and then the lead vocalist, Mary Palm, she just released her own solo album and it was beautiful, but it was just her with her guitar and uh, four or five backing vocalists. And it, it was just incredible. It was amazing. You, you definitely got to check it out. So I want to talk more about, and, and we've touched on quite a bit of just the band and, and your roles in the band. Um, but I do want to go into more what's going on right now with your band. And, and I know specifically right now, it sounds like you're doing a lot of uh, kind of long distance jamming and things mm-hmm. like that. But, but it, when, when your band writes a song, what does that look like? Like with that many members, how does that, how does that go from a, a, an idea to a recording that I hear? Right. So um, I, you know, I, I, you know, with a song like I'll Be Burning For You, for example, I wrote the lyrics and then I put together the chords, the harmonic progression for the song. I wrote the song. Um, then, you know, there are four arrangers in the band. So Caleb, um, uh, Phil Engsberg, Ryan Tomsky, and then there was a former member who was, who was with the band. So he took my song. I'll be burning for you with the lyrics and the chords. And then he arranged it. He basically expanded it for a 19 piece band. So he wrote parts for the saxophones, for the trombones, for the trumpets. He, he added in like these like interludes um, and different like sections to the song. It's basically, you know, he basically kind of like created like, you know, like a, a remix of the song with horns. Yeah. Um, so that's how it will kind of work if they're working with one of my original songs. I'll write the song first, you know, the lyrics and the chords, and then they'll, one of the arrangers will take the song and magnify it for the band. Yeah, and it is a little old schooly way of doing it. Mm-hmm. So like one example we all know, like Frank Sinatra. So Frank Sinatra picks a song, the, the song gets approved. Now, they would have one musician be the arranger, and he would write all the music for every musician. And then, you know, 60 people show up. They have strings and band and choir, some of these giant things, and they, everyone gets the sheet music from one person's master vision. And that's m- mostly how we do our band. So we have the music arrangers, which is like very similar to arranging a song is basically putting all the elements out, picking what you're going to do. Very similar to making a beat for anyone who you on the discord or who's watching. Like what textures, what sounds you're going to use. Exactly. What bass, what drum, how's the drum going to play, etc. And then we actually print out the music and then everybody reads the music. Now, when we are in the zone and we're practicing, rehearsing, recording, people can give their two cents. Uh, Caleb, is this supposed to be long? Is this supposed to be short? Caleb, am I supposed to solo here or there? Do you want me to play this or that? And then it becomes very collaborative and and, uh, an exchange of ideas. However, the core of it is kind of one person's vision. So even, let me ask this, even does does the the arranger write the solo or just say this many bars solo? Yes. Okay. So those are made up. So those are improvised. So you just okay. say you know this many bars or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 fantastic. It seems like the best of both worlds because somebody is uh, ensuring the this many people are going to make a pleasant thing to listen to um, in in the in the singing portions of the song, but then everybody kind of gets that that moment to just go off on their instrument, you know, <laughs> having examined how you guys go about the, the composition for the fullness of the band, I would like to talk more about the specific corners of these compositions and ideas that the two of you uh, are, are, are most in charge of, I guess I'll say. So uh, Al- Allison, starting with you, what is your songwriting process like? Okay. So um, when I start writing a song, I always start with like a melodic idea. So like, I'll like hum something to myself, like, like something like that. I'll just hum to myself. 
Um, and then if I like that idea, then I will start at the beginning of the song and I'll, I'll begin to write lyrics. So I'll write the melody and the lyrics simultaneously. Um, and I'll basically work from top to bottom of the form of the song. So starting with the verse, the chorus, um, and, and any other sections that, you know, that I might want to add to the form. But for me, it always starts with something that I can sing. Something that, like, I liked, I latch on to. <laughs> something that I really, really like. And then I feel committed enough to sit down and start at the beginning of the song. Um, so that's, that's really how it always, it always starts for me with singing. Always. Mm -hmm. do, do you find more often that the, the melody that comes to you first ends up being the hook of the song? Or, or is that the one that you usually start at the top with and make the verse? Um, you know, that's interesting. Sometimes, sometimes the idea that I get, it's for like a hook. Um, and then I'll hold on to it and I'll try to find a way to like, I don't know if this is harder, but I'll try to find a way to work backwards and like, you know, just think to myself, well, ha I have this idea for this hook. How do I get to that place? You know, like, so I need to figure out the verse and then kind of continue on to this idea. So sometimes it's, it's, it's the hook. Sometimes it's the verse. Um, but it always, always starts with singing always singing. I think there's a, there's an obvious just joyfulness in singing that comes through in, in your, in your music. So I think it, it makes sense. And I think uh, it's applicable to anyone on any instrument, you know, if, mm -hmm. if you love it, just, just engage with it and it will, you and it together will be the, the, the writing force behind the better ideas, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I read somewhere, I had a songwriting professor in college and that's, that's something that he would always stress to us. His name was Martin Briley. Um, he would just always just be like, you know, don't focus on the cool chords or like, you know, these Shakespearean lyrics. He was like, most people, you know, they're focused on the melody. Is it something that they can sing? Is it something that makes them feel good? So he was always trying to get us to focus on our melodies. You know, he's like, you have to be able to hum it. You have to be able to sing it. Um, he was like, don't worry about the harmonic progression, you know, because that's not the first thing that people fall in love with. So I guess it comes from that. For sure. Yeah. That's a, I mean, it, that sounds like a, it sounds like a, a, a college professor's way of saying what you just told me. <laughs> and yeah. both, both are absolutely uh, inspirational in, in, in a way that makes me eager to just sit without my guitar next time and just mm -hmm. ask myself, what song do I want to make? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely try it. Definitely try it. Uh, what, what about you, Caleb? Uh, both as far as when you craft maybe a, a solo or when you are doing the arranging for all these different instruments over, over a whole piece, um, what does that process look like for you? So the, it's interesting. Allison brought up the melody because the melody is always king and it's always key. It's the most important thing. And I think we see that in a lot of the tracks that get submitted. And sometimes the melody is maybe there's too many other tracks, right? So maybe you're in logic and you have 40 tracks, 60 tracks. Maybe you need to have a little bit less because when you're making uh, your music, when you're making your beat, when you're making an arrangement, it's actually like an omelet, right? It's like an omelet because if you have an omelet with cheese, peppers, mushrooms, four different types of meat, hungry, you know, man. too much stuff, it's, yeah. it's not clear. It's too much stuff. So sometimes you have to simplify that and have a more clearer, tastier omelet with less, less flavors. Mm -hmm. And that and one that showcases the melody, because the melody is always key. And in fact, that's some advice I've give, I give people on the subreddit, the IMF subreddit. I tell them, look, 
take one track and make that the melody track, make that the loudest, and make everything else work around the melody track. Yeah, because yeah. the melody is key. Absolutely. Uh, before we before we move on, I would like to know what would you say is the melody in a good omelet? <laughs> it would be the eggs. <laughs> yeah. Cheese, okay. Yes. Yeah. And a vegetable. Like yes. Not too, yes. Too much. Onion. Onion. Uh, a little onion, yeah. That's right. A little flavor there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's just some good overall advice that I do try and adhere to. You know, yeah. I mean, sometimes you'll start, you know, composing with your trombone, right? That's true. Like so I'll just use one one voice on the trombone, my most comfortable instrument. Mm. So if you got if you're comfortable on the drums, if you're comfortable on you know a keyboard or this or that, start with that one instrument. What did yeah. Cecil say to you about a? Uh, composing on your instrument you'll have the easiest whatever you're most comfortable with is going to be the instrument that you compose the most freely on so if that instrument is you know a single piece of software maybe it's fruity loops and you're really comfortable with fruity loops Mm -hmm. stick with that rather than doing a bunch of other things and complicated things if it's piano, you want to just get that piano sounding really good before you yeah, add yeah. a bunch of other stuff. For sure. Well, I think uh, I would I would say an easy uh, metaphor for what we're talking about mm-hmm. is this conversation. Like we could all try to have this conversation in second languages, um, mm-hmm. but it's going to sound at the very least less natural. We're, we're going to yes. have less freedom to express what it is we're trying to say, you know, Um so I, th- I think in the same way, like whatever instrument is, is the one that you can think with <laughs> the quickest, you know, that makes sense. I, uh, I do, speaking of instruments, I, I do have a, a bit of a, a game that I would like to try with you guys if you're, if you're down for it. Um, Excellent. Yeah, I've, I've, I've named this game Horn or Bird, mm. and we're going to listen to a few sound clips, and we're going to determine if they are horns or birds. Mm, cool <laughs> okay let's do i it. like it one very important thing about these sound clips is they are less than a second long because any more than that kind of gives away the context okay. so i'll play them as many times as we need all right um, caleb I've has also... been preparing for this game all his life oh, yeah. i'm ready for horn or birds <laughs> yeah yeah awesome awesome <laughs> oh Ooh. it sounded like that sounded like a trumpet i think that's a horn yeah I think Allison, that's a horn. You think I think that's, that's a, horn? a horn. Yeah. I am so glad that you guys think that's a horn because I was really scared after listening to it 150 times that it was too easy to guess that it is a, it is indeed a bird. <laughs> it's a bird. Oh my gosh! <laughs> awesome. Wow. All right. That's not, all right. <laughs> okay. Sample number two. Let's sample number two. I'm going to go with bird. I don't trust myself. I'm going to go with bird. Uh, horn? <laughs> uh, that, that one is going to be a trumpeting swan. So, Oh, it's, no. It is it's indeed a, a bird. It's a bird. A trumpeting <laughs> swan. This is a fantastic wow. game. Wow. <laughs> yeah, this is a great game. All right. I'm, I'm, now I'm going to unmute again. Let's go. We got right. sample number three. Last sample. Okay, okay, that, that, that's got to be a bird. Yeah, that's got to be a bird. <laughs> that's got to be a bird. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a, an aftermarket car horn you can buy uh. <laughs> from your car. <laughs> so technically, it's a horn. Oh, oh my god! That's a type of horn. I'm not... That's an extended type wow. of horn. Wow, oh my yeah. god. There are people out there in truly like more avant-garde side of trumpet playing and trombone playing they can make sounds out of that trumpet you go man is that a person or a uh, yeah or a machine or a bird or a... I mean all, all <sighs> I, I have to believe at some point all uh all human music emulates the world in which they live so it makes sense to me man horn or bird <sighs> Horner Bird, that was a fun game. I appreciate yeah, you guys that playing. Was. That was a great <laughs> game. Else, yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. Howdy again, y'all. I hope you are enjoying the show so far. Caleb and Allison are wonderful people playing a style of music I never uh, had the opportunity to venture into. 
which is why I want to spend a moment talking to you about the place I first heard them, Indie Music Feedback. Uh, these interviews are recorded live each week on the Discord server set up by Pax and Volps, the creators of IMF. But that isn't all that goes on there. IMF started as a subreddit with the dream of getting musicians to really listen to one another. It sounds simple, but in practice I have experienced firsthand the encouragement and growth that comes from spending time sharing my art with others and listening when they share with me. Uh, it is a very welcoming, compassionate, and talented community that would love to get to know you and your art. Look for the IMF links in my link tree in the show notes and come by sometime. I really hope to see you there. You can, you can ask for T-Rex. Uh, now let's get back to the interview. I want to ask, and this is one of my favorite questions to ask, why do you make music? What is it that you are hoping uh, the listener receives or your own life and soul uh, accomplishes or establishes through this music that you make? Wow. Um, Allison, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I make music because I like feeling, you know, connected to people. Um, you know, I like, let's see, I make music. Hmm, this is a really tough question. I like it because I like the expression of music. Mm -hmm. I just love the feeling of playing the horn, playing the trombone and just hearing the sound. <sighs> You know, yeah, and just yeah, yeah. trying to learn. There's always something new to learn, too. There's always something new to learn. Mm -hmm. And actually, I learned quite a bit when I joined the IMF Indie Music Feedback, uh, the Reddit groups, and the um, this Discord. Because I had not done a lot of remote projects where I was recording tracks and sending to people. I just never did it. I did live projects, and I did live gigs. So when I joined, I was like, hey, let's get somebody, let's get something going. And you guys helped me learn a lot. I didn't know how much I had to learn until, yeah. you know, until I came to the same, same, same thing. Like I showed up and realized like, oh, maybe mixing everything around the drums isn't the point all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's a, lot, a lot of good stuff to learn for sure. Um, and, and Allison, don't, don't, uh, don't feel, one, don't feel pressured to answer at all. <laughs> Uh, but two, don't feel pressured to have some, you know, lofty uh, uh, reason. I mean, I think this, the joy uh, of of using your voice the way that you do, that you've already expressed is reason enough. You know, if that if that is uh, <clears throat> if, if your answer is that you've already told me, I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just it sounds it's going to sound very simple, but I just love it. I love mm. the thrill of the songwriting I love the thrill of just, you know, performing and putting a show together and trying to spread the word and yeah. the excitement around a new song, a new project. It's exhilarating. So mm. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that that comes through, but both a passion for learning more of it, a passion for doing more of it, and just a passion for 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 being present with it in, in the right now, all of that comes through in, in the, both the, the bigger ensemble pieces that I've, I've heard from you guys and the, the, I don't even want to say more like stripped down because even Mr. Wonderful was, was quite a, quite a piece, you know, Qu quite, quite a good deal of layers. Um, yeah, we probably do do too many layers. We, yeah. we sometimes <laughs> we do too many layers. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know if I would, if I am, uh, of authority to say too many, but I personally like the amount of layers on, on the songs I've heard so far. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to ask just more about um, maybe the upcoming, upcoming things for, for both big beat, but also Allison and Caleb, like what, what's going on? Are you guys working on another full length? Are you working on promoting the, the one you already have? What's going on? So, um, Obviously, with everything happening right now with COVID, um, you know, an, an ensemble, a group like ours performing, you know, live right now is it's just not going to happen right now. Um, so with that in mind, when we entered when we entered the quarantine, we were like, how can we, you know, still engage um, with the people who like our music? How can we still be creative? 
during this time period. And I think we came to the conclusion that that's going to exist primarily online. Um, so trying to, you know, we're going to try to, to maybe put out an EP uh, next month. That's yeah. something that we're working on. We're doing a photo shoot this weekend. So that's so that's one thing we can do with the band is we can we can make material, record from home. We can't play live, mm-hmm. and we can't do shows. But in in a positive way, I mean that's allowed me to work with musicians I could never normally work with because mm-hmm. I like to work with musicians from New York, maybe the outer boroughs, Queens, Brooklyn. But for them to come out to a show that might be in New Jersey, it's a lot of work. But for them to record a song at home on Tuesday afternoon when they're not doing anything, they love doing that. Yeah. So the quarantine has opened a lot of doors for our group and in some ways has been a blessing. And it has pushed us at, to join online communities like this one. Because when you get so into your own community, you don't realize that a random person in another country or another, they've never heard of you. So there's just so many people out there. So thinking globally is what we're going to be doing. And uh, getting our YouTube channel out there. Keep working on the videos and video editing and uh, creating our own content. Heck yeah, man. This sounds yep. really exciting. And I'm looking forward to uh, watching it happen, you know, experiencing some of it, uh, retweeting some of it. I love retweeting. Yeah, it's- great. Well, every, <laughs> it's like, man. We were talking before about like advice and stuff. It's like you got to tell your friends and your family and others, people on Discord, whoever, you know, you got to give them an action. And it's like, Mm. we do need the help. Like we need the shares. We need just the clicks and the views and the comments. And it's Mm. like every bit helps. And when you can start to engage your fans, friends, even if you don't have almost any fans at all if you have a handful of people your friends and family which we still do all the time you know engage them and give them you know the call to action like hey we're indie artists and we're trying to get out there everything Mm -hmm. you can do helps yeah yeah and and i think uh something specific that you just said is to well to reuse the same word to be specific with a call to action not just not just listen to this and hope they share it, but say, I need you to share this so people I don't encounter can see it too, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool, man. Well, I I would like to uh, uh, maybe move into playing this this last song that we're going to uh, listen to together. Would you guys like to introduce uh, Fair Chance a little bit? Um, Yeah, so this actually ties up a lot of elements we've talked about in the interview today. Nice. So this is... um, from Thundercat's newest album, It Is What It Is. The album came out in late February, and then the quarantine started, so we all were home. I We started listening to it a lot because we were home, and we said we have to cover one of the songs on here. So, you know, doing covers is a is a way that you can expand your band's audience because the fans of Thundercat may then like your band because you did a real creative cover of them so we took this song started working on a cover in when when was that allison late march Uh, early april yeah well caleb you know the uh, the it is what it is came out and then when we heard fair chance we were just like we love the song it's a great song and then caleb started working on it right away so when we say working on it caleb was arranging it he was a, he was writing out the parts for the saxophones, the trumpets. There's a tuba player on this. Um, there's a vibraphone player on this. So he was writing out all those parts. Yes, and I also I will say I I transcribed. I wrote out every single note of the um, beat. So I really enjoyed learning the beat from this mm-hmm. song, and I spent a lot of time trying to find every element and work it into the final mix. And then I started adding my own elements. And uh, Allison also got really heavily involved on this one because we're at home. We we bought this microphone set up, so we started recording a vocal intro at home. So then, you know, you know, it started with the beat, started with the melody. Then we added a vocal intro, and we just kept building, building, building. I'm super happy with it, and we're gonna 
this mix is basically done, and we're going to release it in uh, a couple of weeks. So this is the first time anyone's ever hearing it. So Yeah. Awesome, awesome. I'll go ahead mm-hmm. and uh, hit play.
Oh, man. It was such a pleasure to be here talking with you all. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it thank was. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah. yeah thank you so much. I, I have truly, like, picked up quite a few things that I am just excited to fold into my own creative beliefs and practices. So th- this has been wonderful. It, I, I, I love having the opportunity to share y'all's music. Uh, with folks, but also just share your hearts with people and, and, and your dedication. It's, it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm very grateful for your time. Oh yes. Thank you very much. You know, if anyone is interested in our ensemble, I just dropped the link in the chat. You could also go to our website for anyone listening on at home. It's www.bigbeatbigband.com. Mm-hmm. So all of our stuff is right there. And uh, just, you know, like I said before, we are indie artists and, Every follow and comment, it just really helps. We've been working really hard at it for about six years right now. And uh, we're, it's all do-it-yourself. So we, so we don't have a big label or you know, managers behind us. And we're just uh, keeping going with it and really excited for the future. Heck yeah, man. Me too. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys go. Y'all have a good one. Thank yes. you so much. Have a great day. Yes. You too. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I am very grateful for the time I got to spend talking with Caleb and Allison about their passion, their art, their journey, and I'm very grateful for your time listening. I really hope you have taken something from this conversation that is going to help you on your path to becoming your fullest artist. That path is never completed, but we continue it every day, and I am excited to be walking it with you. You know, I am learning to make this podcast. I'm still a student of every instrument I've ever wanted to play, and because there is community around me, because I'm able to share with others and tune into idea-sharing content like this show, um, I have grown, and I really hope this show does the same thing for others that similar content has done for me. Additionally, I really hope you have picked up a passion and a a curiosity about getting to know more about Caleb and Allison's band, Big Beat. There will be a link in the show notes, so follow that. Listen to their music. It is jamming. They they are a big band, but they cover a range of things that every single person, any kind of musical fan, is going to find something they enjoy in their catalog of work. I am absolutely confident. Um, I hope to catch up with you live next week for the uh, interview uh, on IMF or on Twitch. I've set up a Twitch for the show. But if not, uh, you know, two weeks and another episode will go up. It's going to be a good one as well uh, with plenty of things to learn and share and, and use in your own creative practice. Uh, until then, please stay courageous, stay curious, and stay creative.